Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. We've got some more Master Duel for you. In today's video, we are going to be looking at Sky Strikers, which is a deck I actually haven't played in quite a while. Uh, I've just been so busy with laddering, and then before that, the Xyz Festival, and then other decks I was playing around with that... Uh, this is one of the decks I've kind of neglected to come back to for a little while, so I figured I'd go ahead and revisit it. Plus, we recently crafted Terraforming for the Numeron deck, so I figured I'd go ahead and add it into the deck here. I also have a few other additions from the uh, Ad Emancipator crafts as well. So, yeah, this is going to be my, I guess, Season 3 update profile for this deck. Um, even though I don't play the deck a whole lot, Sky Strikers do still, still have kind of like a soft spot in my heart. I'm just, I'm really fond of this deck. I really like its playstyle. I really like the combos it can go into, especially now that we're working with a full extra deck. I mean, I look back at the first deck profile I built with, like, you know, I, I, you know, put up with this deck, and like even then I knew I wasn't playing like an optimal extra deck, but I definitely underestimated, like, underestimated rather, what a difference the extra deck can make once you've got everything... Uh, that's good to have into it. Um, yeah, cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at the list, and then I'll break down some of the card choices. We'll go over it again because, again, it's been a while since I've posted anything with Sky Strikers. We'll talk about how the deck works and some of the combos. And then, as always, we'll go ahead and look at a few games so that we can see this deck in action as well. So for the list, we've got two copies of Effect Veiler, three Max C, three Ash, three Ray and two Raz, as well as two Nibirus. It's going to be it for monsters. Spells, we're going to have a Raigeki, a Harpies, Feather Duster, Monster Reborn, Reinforcement of the Army, Terraforming, one Pot of Avarice, three Pot of Desires, two Engage, two Afterburner, two Area Zero, one multi Roll, one uh, Hornets, two Widow Anchor, one Eagle Booster, Two Shark Cannon, and then finally in Traps we have three Infinite Impermanence. Down here in the Extra Deck we've got one copy of Kaigiri, three of Shizuku, three of Hayate, uh, one Kaina, one Christian Halkifbrax, name I always hesitate to pronounce, uh, one Nightmare Phoenix, one IP Mascarena, one Sky Striker Ace Zeke, one Nightmare Unicorn, one Selene, Queen of Master Magicians, and then finally an Access Code Talker. So new additions to this deck from the last version are going to be uh, the addition of Terraforming, as I mentioned. I dropped one copy of multi Roll from the main deck. I was playing two. I dropped one copy for Terraforming. multi Roll is a card that uh, is good to have it too, and I also honestly kind of consider dropping Shark Cannon instead, the second copy, but I think Shark Cannon is actually a good tech in this meta. Uh, the Banish effect is very, very good against pretty much all the top decks right now in some way, shape, or form. Um, if it weren't such a good tech, I would consider taking one of these out and keeping a second multi-roll, but overall multi-roll is not that great of a draw and it's a bit clunky. It is a good card, don't get me wrong, but you typically just want to search it out early on and then you don't need it after that, so... As for the extra deck, I took out a Hita the Blaze Charmer and the second Kaina in order to finally fit in IP Mascarena and Nightmare Unicorn, which we crafted for the Ad Emancipator deck. Uh, it's nice to have the option to go into that combo with this deck. It doesn't come up too often, but there are some situations where like you'll take control of something with either like Widow Anchor or a Shark Cannon, and you don't really have much to do with it. Well, you can go into an IP Mascarena, and then if you have another card out, you can potentially Nightmare Unicorn on your opponent's turn. Nightmare Unicorn also being a good generic Link 3 option, with the, which this deck can use occasionally, not too often, but it does come every now and then. As always, we are playing the Selene as well, so that we can go into our Axis Code kind of combo. It's a way that we can set up a kill on our opponent. Basically, the idea is that uh, one of the reasons we like to go second, this is a going second deck, as I mentioned in the Numeron deck profile. Sky Striker is a going second deck because we basically like to set up our Hayate on our first turn uh, in order to set up our graveyard and make some plays. We can either put a Ray in Grave with Hayate. More often than not, that we're going to be putting a spell, usually Engage in Grave, so that main phase two, we can link into Kaigiri, get the spell back, activate it, and then link away into Shizuku, which is the Sky Striker we usually want to end on. So that way, you know, that puts our opponent down to 6,500. So the next turn, we have the potential option with one of our tuners to link into a 
uh, Chris John here, and then with that we can summon Effect Valor. Then we can link into Celine since we're playing a spell heavy deck. Celine can get uh, the three spell counters pretty easily. She can bring back the Effect Valor we searched with our Chris John, and then from there we can go into Access Code Talker. Sometimes you can also steal an opponent's tuner with Monster Reborn to use for this combo as well, and then you don't have to actually have a tuner, or you can use your normal summon for something else, but. Yep, that is one of the main ways to get a kill in this deck. The other main way to do it is to just grind the opponent out. Um, this is somewhat of a... It's kind of a, like mostly a control deck, but it can also combo occasionally as well. Um, it's not like a stun deck or anything, but basically in an ideal situation, we're just locking down our opponent's board with our hand traps or like Widow Anchor. We're stopping players with Shark Cannon. We're answering their board with Afterburners. We're using Multi Roll to get back our Widow Anchors and Shark Cannon as we're using them. Uh, the Area Zero can help us fetch a bunch of stuff. Uh, yeah, we can steal our opponent's things and then link into them with Widow Anchor, and Widow Anchor being arguably. You know, except for Engage and its utility, Widow Anchor is, I think, one of the more powerful uh, Sky Striker mecha spells. I'm only playing two Raws because Raws doesn't really come up too much. Mostly the copies of her are good just to have more options to go into a Sky Striker link early. Although there are some times where, like, the special summon effects can come up to, like, put a body on the board to make a bigger link monster or something. Um... But, yeah, I don't really like three. I was playing three, I think, initially, but I think two copies is just about good. Um, I really like the Nibirus in this deck. Nibiru, in particular, is very, very good because, again, this is a going second deck. So, I mean, I just really like Nibiru in general. I see some people say that Nibiru is not great in this format, but I highly disagree. I think Nibiru is an excellent card. Um, good in general to have, like, just insurance. If I can fit Nibiru in a deck, I usually do. And Nibiru is especially good here in Sky Striker as a means of countering our opponent's large turn one play. As Aside from, like, you know, Raigeki, we don't have a whole lot of ways to deal with, like, a huge board. So, I think that Nibiru is uh, particularly important for this deck. Yep, so that's about all I've got to say for the build itself. Let me see, I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything. Well, Pot of Desires, that's right, I wanted to talk about Pot of Desires. I knew there was one other card I wanted to mention. So, I've been playing Pot of Desires in this deck, and I'm kind of on the fence about it now. Um, I don't think this is like Tri Brigade Zodiac, where... Typically, the 10 banishes don't matter too much in Trizu, mostly because we're playing a lot of copies of each card in our deck. The problem with the Desires in a deck like Sky Striker is, like, you know, we got a lot of, like, one of those, like, multi roll, Mecha Drone, um, you know, Eagle Booster, I guess, to an extent. Um, you know, all of our, you know, staple one of spells, but even we have a lot of two ofs, right? Like Engage, Afterburners, pretty much everything else. And it's really easy to banish all of your copies of something with desires in a deck like this where you're not playing as many three ofs as opposed to like Tri-Brigade Zodiac. I mean, you look at this deck, our only three ofs are, you know, Maxi, Ash, Imperm, Ray, obviously, and then like Desires itself. So I have kind of considered cutting Desires, although if I do cut Desires, I definitely want some other kind of like card advantage engine in its place. I just don't know exactly what kind of engine I would use at this time. So if you have suggestions, if you're a bit more familiar with Sky Striker than I am, because like I said towards the beginning of the video, I admittedly don't play this deck as much as I should or would like to. Um, I just have, you know, so, so it's like so many decks, so little time, right? But if you're a more experienced Sky Striker player um, and you have suggestions for this build, particularly for the uh, Desire slots, do let me know in the comments because I'm always looking for those kind of suggestions. Okay, so I think that's about all I've got to say about the deck itself. Let's go ahead and take a look at some games that I have from when I was uh, playing around with this new build here. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is the first game we're going to be taking a look at here. It's actually going to end up being the Mirror Match, so this should be pretty interesting to watch play out here. Alright, so we are going second. We won the coin flip, I believe, here. So you know, our opponent's going to start with an Upstart Goblin, and after the Upstart in the Rota, I knew this was already going to be the Mirror Match. Our hand is decent for the mirror match um it's decent in general so you might have noticed that my opponent 
summoned Ray there and then Link summoned it, but I didn't max C when they normal summoned Ray. And the reason I didn't do that is because Ray is a quick effect. So even if I max C to try to get the draw, my opponent's just going to chain Ray's effect to go into the Link summon they would have gone into anyway. So trying to max C there is pointless. Uh, we can see our opponent activates a Kaiser Coliseum. So they're actually playing this variant, which. I actually have not uh, invested in the Kaiser Coliseum variant just yet. Um, it's not that obviously I don't have the crafting materials. Kaiser Coliseum is only a super, so I wouldn't mind crafting a set of them if I wanted to use Kaiser in this deck. The issue is that I really don't, to be honest with you. Um, there are a decent amount of the times, sure, where Kaiser Coliseum is really, really good, and it can shut down our opponent from making too many plays, but I find that I go for the access code kill, not like all of the time. I don't even know if I would say most of the time, but I think enough of the time where it's not uncommon for me to have multiple monsters on board. I guess I could think about taking the desires out for Kaiser Coliseums. Huh. Now that I actually talk about this out loud and mention, I think I will actually try doing that. So who knows, maybe you'll see another update uh, for the Sky Striker deck here sooner rather than later. But um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and imper my opponent's Shizuku during the end phase so that they don't get the search off of that. I definitely want to deny our opponent's ability to add that. I'm going to activate Desires here. And if we get an Avarice in Area 0, which is an okay draw, we look at our Banishes here. Um, we didn't lose too much, although we did lose both Engage, which is a little bit uh, a little bit of an issue. That's again, like I was saying with Desires, why I'm about a little bit iffy on it in this deck. Um, the thing is, though, I like the, the advantage that Desires gives. It's super helpful in a deck like this where we're trying to grind advantage out from our opponent. So. That's kind of why I'm hesitant to drop it, but... Yeah, we're going to go ahead and steal our opponent's Shizuku with Widow Anchor, Summon Ray. We can smack our opponent for 4,500 total here. I'm going to link away their Shizuku to go into Kaigiri. Now, I am in a little bit of an awkward stage here, right? Because now I have a monster in my main monster zone, and I can't Widow Anchor if I need to. So I think what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to give up my access to Raze, which is not something I typically like to do, but I'm going to go for a Nightmare Phoenix. I'm going to get rid of this Kaiser Coliseum because I'm planning on summoning ideally multiple monsters uh, during my next turn with this Nightmare Phoenix to maybe go into an access code for lethal, um, but mainly going to the Nightmare Phoenix so that I can make my Widow Anchors live. I'm going to obviously chain Maxi to the Hornet drones. I definitely want to... Uh, get some draws in so I can try to go again. I'm gonna try to go for lethal next turn if possible We drew a Roz, which is a pretty decent draw for this scenario But it's gonna go into Hayate. I draw an Ash uh, I decide not to Widow Anchor here because I'd like to ideally save it for my next turn if possible And sure enough our opponent doesn't really do anything else So I am going to be able to do just that. I'm going to flip the Widow Anchor here steal their Hayate uh, and then I'll activate Desires, even though it's not really necessary. I'm going for kill this turn, so I figure I might as well. I'm just going to summon Roz and then move into the battle phase. I could have, you know, gone for the access code here, but um, I didn't think in particular it matter in this scenario. So, yep, sure enough, we're able to just attack with everything for a game and then secure lethal that way. So, yeah, a bit of an interesting back and forth of the mirror match. We were able to... Uh, get the win in there. Again, it's it's really fortunate our opponent didn't set up too much of the Hayate. Again, I was kind of going back and forth whether or not I should negate it with the Widow Anchor in response to the attack, but it ultimately worked out that we didn't because we were able to steal it and then go for game. So let's go ahead and move on to the next game here. All right, next duel we've got here. This one's going to be against an interesting variant of Numerons, or I guess it would be more fitting to call this a generator deck with a Numeron engine. So... Um, we're going to force them to go first here, because uh, I believe, if I recall correctly, we won the coin flip, so we're going second. Poet's going to plant a Pathfinder, and I'm immediately glad I won the flip, because, you know, I see Numerons, and I'm like, okay, obviously, we know from the last video that Numerons definitely would much rather go second than first, so they're going to get out their Numeron plays here, and then they're going to link them away, this time into a, not an Appalachia like I was expecting, but rather a, a Seriusia Skulldread. It's an interesting card. They're going to be able to get the third effect, or yeah, the third effect here, which can let them draw four cards and put three back. They'll set another card and pass. So I'm going to Harpy's Feather Duster to go ahead and get rid of their back rows as well as their Numeron Network. Now I'm going to Area Zero, get rid of the Shark Cannon, mostly to load up my grid with spells. Annoyingly, though, our opponent's going to have an Ash, so we're not going to be able to do that and get the Excavate. So yeah, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get three spells in our grave this turn. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and normal summon right here and then go for the Hayate just to set up some amount of plays. Um, again, even though I don't have the three spells, I'm still going to send the engage here so that I can link it to Kaigiri in lane phase two, add it back and get a search. I believe I'm going to end up adding a Widow Anchor if I recall correctly. But I'm at this point I'm pretty sure, you know, in my head anyway, I'm thinking, oh, my opponent's still playing Numerons. So what I can do is before I go into Shizuku at the end, I can go into Kaina and then force the Siryu Skull Dread not to attack. That way it can't attack me, and then even if my opponent has another Numeron network, they still won't be able to OTK me because they have a monster on board. Again, as we'll see in a bit here, my opponent is actually going to end up only be playing the Numerons as a bit of an engine, and they're going to mainly be a generator deck, but... Uh, we're going to search Afterburners. Because I already had access to Widow Anchor and Shark Cannon, I didn't really feel the need to grab either. And we have Engaging Grave, so we can't search that. Opponent's going to normal summon Planet Pathfinder, but I think they realize, uh, or rather they fail to realize that they can't attack with Skuldred because they move into the battle phase and then immediately into main phase two. They are going to get the generator boss stage, however, so as we draw for turn here, they're able to activate the effect. Uh, I'm going to max in response so that I can get a couple draws not only from the generator monster being summoned, but also the tokens that are going to fill their board as well. They're going to get Hard Generator Boss of Storms, which has a quick effect. They contribute two generator monsters to negate and destroy the activation of a card or effect. As you can see, they get plenty of generator tokens, so they can just sack two of these. I'm going to go ahead and flip Shark Cannon now to banish the Ash, which seems a bit pointless, but I need to get this third spell in my grave before I Widow Anchor, and I want to Widow Anchor to negate and take control of the Har here. So I'm going to Afterburner and target the Skull Dread. Predictably, my, my opponent's going to try to negate with Har. I'm going to negate with Widow Anchor and then take control of Har. So that's only going to leave my opponent with two tokens. Since I have an Effect Veiler in hand, I can set up the Access Code Kill here that I mentioned. So I'm going to be doing that in order to uh, secure the win here. First, I'm going to link away into Hayate, though. See if my opponent's got a response to that. They do. They have a um, Trias Hierarchia, which I've actually never heard of this, even heard of this card before. But your opponent's going to uh, send their tokens in order to summon this monster and destroy my Hayate, but fortunately I have Rose's special summon as well as Ray, so I'm going to end up with more than enough damage. I still have the normal summon as well, so I summon the Effect Veiler, link it away with Har to go into the Crystron. Crystron's going to bring out another Effect Veiler for my deck. We can then send those two away for Selene. Selene will get the spell counters. She can bring back Effect Veiler, and then I link those into Access Code Talker for Lethal. And you see, even if they were at 8,000 still, this would still be lethal in this scenario. So yeah, this is, like I said, why I kind of don't like, I don't know, Kaiser Coliseum. I guess it's still good for that first turn, but it's really only good on the first turn only, so I'm afraid it's just going to be a bit of a dead draw sometimes, whereas the Desires can potentially unbreak you from a dead draw, so... Um, but this access code line is something that I do relatively often. Again, not all or necessarily even most games, but often enough that I think um, having multiple monsters on board is going to be a frequent enough scenario. That combined with, again, I'm just concerned about Kaiser Coliseum being a dead draw. I don't know. That's kind of why, I'm, again, I'm hesitant to run it so far. But, okay, let's go ahead and go into the next game here. Okay, next game is going to be against a... Uh, this is the True King, True Draco player, I believe. So, yeah, interesting that we're going to be playing against a more a more controlling deck, like a deck that is more of a stun deck than we are. So they'll set the Monarchs Erupt to summon their True Draco. They're going to Desires. I'm, of course, going to Ash that so that they don't gain any more advantage because, you know, obviously... These uh, control decks and sun decks can care a lot more about advantage than most uh, combo decks do, as they don't have the combos to end on strong boards necessarily, so they have to rely on having a lot of cards in general so that they can uh, stay ahead of the opponent that way. But they're going to end with both the Ignis Heat and the Dynamite Knight, which is pretty annoying. That means they can get a continuous spell and trap directly from their deck. I'll start with Desire's opponent's going to respond with the Dynamite Knight. Uh, that way they can get their... Uh, they're going to end up getting the Apocalypse, which is the one that can have monsters attack and defense points. Uh, you might remember way, way back from the beginning of Season 2, I kind of played around with a true Draco, true King deck, and 
We learned in that video that this card can be very, very powerful for controlling the board. It can be deceptively powerful even, so... On top of that, our opponent's going to get Disciples with Ignis Heat. I'm going to go ahead and set up a multi-roll and then a Dronus Horn to go into a Hayate play here. Opponent's going to have a Solemn Judgment for the summon, which is not ideal. We still have Roz, though, so we can still go into plays with that. We can even go into another Hayate, so ultimately I'm not too fussed. And actually, my opponent having their life points here uh, is pretty helpful. We're going to go ahead and attack directly. Our opponent's going to use their... Um, Apocalypse to get rid of the Disciples, mostly just to get rid of my multi rule so I don't set up a bunch of cards here. Um, that is going to put enough spells in my graveyard, though, in order to uh, send the Engage and also be able to get the draw as well with Kaigiri. So we're definitely going to set that up with the Hayate Kaigiri. I'll switch a Widow Anchor here. And I'm actually going to activate it now, and I'm going to steal my opponent's Dynamite Knight while they are unable to use the effects because they obviously activated this term already this turn, rather, already, so that I can go into Zeke and banish their Ignis Heat. So now, next turn, they won't be able to set up more continuous spells and traps. Um, my plan here is to then go into Shark Cannon, and uh, I wish I could click my opponent's graveyard. Um, Shark Cannon to summon their thing back, and then I was going to link into a Nightmare Unicorn and shuffle the Apocalypse back into their deck, which would have left them without uh, anything on board and, uh, and then nothing in hand. They would have just been in top deck mode, and I could have Desires next turn for more draws, so that was the plan from there to kind of proceed to the end of the game. Uh, draw into any monster, maybe go to an Axis Code for lethal, so... Okay, let's got... Um, I've got a couple more here, actually. Next one's going to be kind of a fun little bonus game. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so this is kind of like, like I mentioned earlier, like a fun little kind of bonus game I wanted to throw on. There's not much here gameplay-wise, but uh, um, it's really going to only be a one-turn replay, but I just wanted to show this off anyway. So our opponent's going to be going first here, right? They'll start with a two-hour guy. They're playing a Phantom Knight deck, I believe. So I'm going to max C, and our opponent, this is what I wanted to show, our opponent is just going to go full on this turn just into the max C challenge quote unquote which i've never been a big proponent of i think generally you should not play into maxi if you don't have a plan to win that turn or if you are going to play into maxi try not to play more than like two maybe three summons into it but no our opponent is not afraid of our maxi at all they're just going to go full all out and keep summoning so um you know maybe the inboard they're trying to make would be good enough to warrant this many summons though the thing is though it's phantom knight right so what are they gonna make they're gonna make a rusty bardish um i don't know i just don't know what could be good enough to warrant like doing all these special summons because the other thing too you have to remember is that as your opponent's going to draw more and more cards with max c they're also going to be drawing outs like the imperm we just drew or like ash like we just drew or nibiru or like other hand traps like dd crow um it's just not, I don't know, I generally just don't think it's a good idea to play into Max C, but... I mean, as you can see here, like, even if our opponent just stops, okay, they're gonna try to go into Utopic Draco Future, which I guess they thought was gonna be worth it, but I mean, I can just negate it with Imperm and then Raigeki, and that just immediately answers their whole, you know, board right there. Plus, you gotta figure, when you're giving any deck this amount of resources, you're just... You're setting yourself up to lose. Again, that's why I don't advise playing this much into Maxi unless you're going to win that turn. Like, I'll affect Valor, the rest of the Bardish here. I know it's going to get negated with the future, but I don't even care because I still have an Ash that I can also negate with the rest of the Bardish. It just makes it so that, like, I don't know, your plays just become less and less significant the more and more resources your opponent has to counter them and then also make plays of their own. But they're going to keep going. They're going to Fog Blades for a Silent Boots. Uh, they're going to summon other Silent Boots. I drew Nibiru at this point, so I'm just going to go ahead and drop Nibiru. And then, yeah, they just concede because, like, of course, what else was going to happen here, right? Now, interestingly enough, that Nibiru might not have even been the right play because that puts a card in my main monster zone. I mean, again, not that I have any shortage of plays here, but um, it is kind of something to think about, maybe more than I did. But again, I figured with all the cards I had in hand, I could just drop Nibiru freely and I could find some way to win. Like, I could, I could pull something out of my ass, basically. So, okay, let's take a look at one more actual game that we've got here for you. Okay, last duel of the video here. This one is going to be against a more, like, traditional Numeron deck. Kind of, like, similar to what we were playing in the uh, deck profile that I did for it. 
And we won this coin flip, so we are forcing Numeron to go first, which is always nice for us. They're just going to have a set monster and pass, so... Um, yep, we drew an interesting hand here. I'm going to start with terraforming. My opponent's going to ash it, and that's actually the reason I did lead with terraforming here is because... Well, actually, now that I think about it, I do have Mecha Drones, uh, the Hornet Drones, rather, so maybe I should have actually activated Rota to try to get baited. My plan was to use Terraforming to bait out the Ash so that I could search Ray, but I think the Area Zero might have been actually a better card here than... Oh, and they just concede that quickly. Wow. Sorry, I saw, I saw this replay, and I thought there was going to be a bit more to it. I apologize, but... Um, oh, yeah, I remember why I wanted to keep that, because I was actually figuring out how I was going to lethal my opponent, right? Um, but the Hornet Drones, the fact that we have that plus the Ray, uh, plus the Monster Reborn, I think we could have actually OTK'd our opponent. Except we didn't have a tuner, though, so maybe I'm just mistaken. Huh, I thought that's the reason why I left that in. Maybe I just left in the wrong replay, but I guess either way I apologize there. But, um, yeah, I mean, at least we got to show that, like, again, there's that kind of debate of whether Area Zero or... Ray would have been better there. Should I have used Terraforming to beat Rota? Should I have used Rota to beat Terraforming? I guess you could kind of go either way, but... Um, okay, I guess that's going to do it for the replays here. Let's go ahead and take one last look at the deck before we end off. Okay, everybody, that is going to do it for this video. So thank you for watching uh, with these uh, Sky Striker games and the updated profile here. Um, I do plan on going through and updating a lot of my other decks that I haven't touched in a while. So do be on the lookout for those. Those should be coming in the near future. But like, yeah, a lot of my other decks that, again, I just haven't played in a while because... Uh, again, we've been, you know, laddering with Trizu, and then uh, we built Ad Emancipator. You'll definitely be seeing more Ad Emancipator videos, because trust me, I've just been having so much fun playing with that deck. But, um, yeah, I do want to go ahead, because I've seen requests for some of my older decks to be updated uh, with some of the new cards we've crafted and for the new season. So, uh, rest assured, you'll be seeing that as well. Um, as always, I want to thank you so, so much for watching, especially all the way to the end of the video like this. Um, I especially appreciate it if you're commenting and subscribing. I love to see the feedback on the decks, on the games, on the videos. Uh, it's just a huge improvement to not only the channel, but me as a player in general, to get that feedback from you guys. Plus, I love answering your guys' questions as well. Uh, I just kind of love the back and forth that we have of, like, I, I feel like you and, you and me are just helping each other out, right? Like... Um, I'm learning from you, you're learning from me. It's just kind of the ideal experience, one I was looking for when I started doing these Master Duel videos, which I think is awesome, and I have you guys to thank for that experience coming uh, to fruition. So, yep, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and sign off the Sexlex, wishing you a fantastic day.